Hey, it's your guy Tyrell back with the interviews. Final match day of the Champions League group stage and Liverpool knock out Napoli. How did they do it? Where did Napoli go wrong? Don't worry, here are the interviews. We've got you covered. So on this edition of the interviews, we're going to break down how Napoli lost to Liverpool. So before we get into today's video, don't forget to give our video a thumbs up if you do enjoy it. The bell below does give you daily notifications regarding our organic, unfiltered soccer slash footy analysis. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. In today's video, we're going to break down how both sides look to approach the game, where they went right, where they went wrong. Then try and get into some of the first half chances before getting to the second half and see how Napoli were able to push forward and how Liverpool were able to hold on to the result. But first, let's get to the starting lineups. We look at Liverpool. No real support prizes 4-3-3 Mane, Salah and Firmino up front in midfield Wijnaldum, Milner and Henderson. Then we get to Napoli same thing with them 4-4-2 Mertens and Insigne up front out in wider areas Callejon and Fabian Ruiz and then midfield we went Alan and Hamstrick so first let's see how both sides look to approach the game in the first half and how Liverpool are able to go into the go into halftime leading 1-0 so when we break down Napoli against Liverpool, we have to look to see how both sides look to approach the game, how they pressed, where they found the advantages. We start off with Liverpool and how they look to get at them because it was really on them. How were they going to go about it? Were they going to press from the front? Were they going to drop off like they have this season? They did start to press from the front. Napoli often, when they had the ball, they had Maximovic sit a bit deeper. They had Mario Rui push out and be, play more advanced. What happens is that it kind of fit into what Liverpool were trying to do because in the end they have the front three and they had the front three sitting on the center backs and Maximovic if they had to push out into wider areas what would happen there was that they could push Arnold out to Rui if need be because that was the individual battle there they could have Wijnaldum sitting with Fabian Ruiz and if they wanted to push Henderson out as well they could but what they often did was they pressed with five they had the front three sitting on those three they could easily push Milner and Wijnaldum to the wide to the midfielders in Alan and Hamshik, and that's how they went about it. And Napoli never really looked to play balls out of the back. If they did have Rui dropped off a bit deeper and Salah stuck to him, they could easily pinch out Mane to um, Albiol and then have Milner step out to Maximovic and push Henderson a bit forward so he could step to the other central midfield as well. They had the aerial advantage so they couldn't really hoof balls over to Insigne or into Mertens because Matip and Van Dijk have the pace to run across the pitch to track them and in aerial duels they are most likely to win them. So that's how Liverpool were going about their business in that sense. And they really stopped Napoli from playing out the back and really creating much in that sense. So that was how they went about it and they were able to find space out in the wider areas based on the fact that they were able to switch the ball quickly out into Arnold and Robertson who looked to push forward to peg back Calion and to peg back um, Fabian Ruiz and because they were so co comfortable in central areas they ensured that Liverpool couldn't really break through there if, if you had Firmino dropping off Alan would track him they were very narrow very compact but that means there's space in the wider areas and that's where in the earlier stages we saw Robertson we saw Arnold deliver crosses into the box that they couldn't really cope with and it was about Salah trying to get in behind to get onto those crosses. The problem here was that Mario Rui was tied onto Mo Salah. He ensured that he couldn't turn. He fouled him. He kept nicking at him. So and even when Salah was able to turn him and break him behind, Koulibaly came across. When Salah pushed out onto that flank, Koulibaly came across. Koulibaly did a very good job when he had Salah with his back to goal because he has the physical presence and the advantage over him and he has the pace to go toe to toe with Salah if he has at least a yard on him. So that was a big problem. Salah only really caused Koulibaly problems when he ran directly at him but for the most part they kept Salah with his back to goal which we've seen him do very well in the Premier League and against some opposition in Europe but here Koulibaly matched him for physical strength and for pace and that was a big problem. When we looked at how Napoli went about it well Napoli looked to press from the front they were able to push into the two 
the front two into the center for into the center backs. They had the wide players pushing out into the into the full backs as well. The problem here was that with Henderson dropping off a bit deeper, they always had somewhat of a 3v2. So let's say Insigne pushed out to a center back, Mertens would sit onto Henderson. If it went vice versa and Mertens pushed out, you'd have Insigne sit onto Henderson. The one time when they could push and have both the uh, center forwards pushing out to the Liverpool center backs. They could gamble and they could have Alan push forward to Henderson, have Hamstrick stick in his role, and then have Calion tuck in a bit narrow so that he could cover the other central midfielder. And if the ball is pushed out to Robertson, he would have to push his way back into that space. But that is how they were going about it in terms of defending from the front and looking to close down Liverpool. It wasn't really successful in that regard. They never really created any many chances in that sense. And the the thing about them was that they were still able to find an advantage without pressing from the front based on the fact that when you look at how Liverpool set up, the wide players are in, Sane, in Salah and Mane aren't going to track back. That means the shuttlers have to push out into those positions and they have to cover that space for them. If not, you leave the fullbacks at a disadvantage. The problem here was that the central midfielders in Wijnaldum and Milner were sitting on to Cal in on Alan and Hamshik, which means there was space out in the wider areas for Rui to get forward. And with Fabian Ruiz tucked in a bit narrow, that instilled his um, ability to push forward. The problem on the other side was that Maksimovic was sitting a bit deeper, so it meant Kalyan was able to push forward as well. So it was more 1v1 battles, so they would have to deliver crosses earlier if the switch of play came on and those players were having to retreat to cover the space. That is where they found their advantage. However, without a central figure, Napoli really struggled in that regard, and we break down the chances, you'll see why. So now let's get to the chances. Let's see how Liverpool and Napoli were able to, how they were able to create their chances, and how Liverpool were able to go into halftime up 1-0. So first, let's start with Liverpool's chances. In the earlier stages, a lot of it stemmed down the wider areas. You look at the first opportunity, it's Wijnaldum, who's able to switch the ball out to Robertson. Maksimovic doesn't get close to him, and we see Salah breaking into the box. The cross comes into him. Salah gets it, takes the first touch, but the first touch is loose, and it rolls into the path of Ospina. That's a great opportunity for Liverpool. They should get something going there, but it doesn't happen. But again, it's a warning sign. The second opportunity, comes about two minutes later we have Milner who is pressed by Alan but then he moves forward so the ball moves to Henderson with the ball moving to Henderson you see Alan step forward and he looks to play the pass in between Fabian and in between Hamshik the ball is played into him and Salah's then able to roll Mario Rui but he keeps up with him and he holds him into that position that is fine that's good defending he didn't need Koulibaly to come over and he pulls it back for Arnold but with Arnold getting the ball we don't see Fabian move towards Arnold and that's a big problem because now he's able to deliver a cross into the box where we see James Milner tower over Maksimovic and not an effort just over the net but again he shouldn't be getting those free crosses and we saw that in the earlier stages and that was a big warning sign for Napoli as we get through the game we see Salah's influence increase we did say Koulibaly was shifting over to cover for him when Mario Rui wasn't frustrating him the first one comes from a misplaced pass and we see Milner played into um, Salah between the lines and he's able to run at goal at the back four. He runs at Maksimovic that's recovering and he slides it into Firmino. Firmino's able to get the ball into the half space but Albiol comes across and makes a vital block. Koulibaly made several vital blocks throughout the first half. That was a big vital block for Napoli. And then we get to the goal. The goal itself followed patient buildup. What we see here is that Milner has the ball in a deep position he's able to slide it in between Fabian and Hamshik into Salah and again we see Salah able to roll Mario Rui and for the first time in the game he gets to go 1v1 with Koulibaly and when he goes 1v1 with him he's able to easily brush by him it's different when you're playing with your back to goal and the defender is stronger and can keep up with you with pace and is intelligent this time he runs at him he's able to beat him for pace to the outside Ospina should do better but Salah pokes his effort past the keeper Liverpool didn't force 
forced Ospina into various saves throughout the first half, but they had advantages out in the wider areas because they weren't getting players, whether it be Maximovic, whether it be Fabian Ruiz closing down quickly, and Robertson and Arnold were able to deliver crosses earlier on in the half. As the half were on, they got a bit better, but Salah's influence increased. We saw the run in the buildup to the goal after, and that was how Liverpool were able to get ahead. But now let's look to Napoli. Let's see how they were able to find some sort of advantage against Liverpool, and to no surprise, it was down the wide area, so let's get to that. Given the shape that both sides looked to adopt, it wasn't a surprise that Napoli also found space in the wider areas. We look to the first opportunity, it kind of sums things up in general. You have Alan pushing the ball into Mertens, who had dropped off ahead of the back four. What happens here is that now with Wijnaldum and with Milner covering the two center, the two central midfielders, they're able to push the ball out into wide areas because those are the players that are supposed to be marking and covering those wide areas because you know Salah is not going to track back. Mane rarely tracks back as well. That's not their job. So with the ball shifted out, it allows Mario Rui to get the ball and shift forward. He delivers a dangerous cross into the box, but it's Virgil van Dijk who gets across and clears the lines. That is what van Dijk was doing throughout the entire game. He was exceptional. He outplayed Koulibaly in spells because he didn't really make mistakes, and he cleared nearly everything in the box that came his way. We look to another opportunity that they do create. It stems from a poor back pass. We see Milner play it into Robertson, but what happens is Insigne drops off, and he pulls the ball back to Alan. Now we have the run in behind Van, in behind Robertson, in behind Milner, and in behind Van Dijk for Mertens, who's driving across, and he pulls out Matip. He's able to pull out Matip, and he's able to locate the run of Hamshik running towards the box, because what happens here is that, like I said, you see Van Dijk and the back four retreating. Hamshik is breaking towards the box, and he curls his effort over the net. But again, you see the space that they exploit in behind Robertson, pushing forward, a mistake between Milner, and again, those two forwards in and Insigne and Mertens are looking to get the ball into those channels, looking to run at the back four. That was a great opportunity for them that Hamstrick should have at least gotten on target. Hamstrick, however, was playing a bit deeper, trying to pick up the ball in those areas. That's where he was most dangerous. You see him clip out a diagonal ball into the onto the right side for Calleon. Robertson was narrow and he was forced to shift out. What we end up seeing here is that we see the run. We see a run from Insigne and he pulls out into that space and he drags a marker out. And the cross from Calleon is cleared by um, is cleared by Van Dyke to ensure that Fabian Ruiz doesn't get across. Matip was out of position, so Henderson was forced to track that run of Insigne. But again, you see Van Dyke, his importance, his physical, his presence in the box alone, he clears everything, is reliable, and that was pivotal to what Liverpool were doing. The final opportunity was a big warning sign for them. It's a poor Allison kick that Calleon is able to intercept. It falls to Alan, and then Calleon gets it back. And in that play alone, we see two runs from Insigne and we see runs from a hamstrick in between the center backs making the runs across what happens there is that because the fullbacks are pushed forward there's a lot of space for Napoli to push into because of Allison's poor kick with that being said he's able to locate Mertens making the run and he dummies it for Fabian Ruiz who is breaking into the box but he flashed his shot wide Napoli were getting into good areas they're able to switch the ball quickly and because the shellers were out covering those central areas they didn't have time to switch out into the wider areas and that for Arnold and Robertson into a lot of 1v1 battles. The problem here is that Napoli dearly missed a central forward that offered an aerial presence. They could have used Milic in the first half, which makes sense as to why he came on in the second. But here, when they had so many crossing opportunities, when they needed someone to apply pressure on Van Dyke and on Matip, they didn't have it. And then Signe and Mertens, Mertens who possibly picked up an injury midway through the first half, didn't offer any significant threat and Allison was untouched. So now let's get to the second half see what changes Carlo Ancelotti made and see how Liverpool were able to hold on to that one nothing victory. So with Liverpool going into the second half up a goal, it changed the pattern of the game. Liverpool didn't have to score another goal. They just had to keep a clean sheet. Whereas for Napoli, they also didn't have to rush into a goal because all they needed was one and they could afford to concede another goal knowing that that one goal that they scored would push them out of the group. So with that being said, Liverpool started the second half very well. They still pressed from the front. What was notable was that Hamstrick started dropping off a bit deeper. When he dropped off a bit deeper, it didn't 
didn't really change the way Liverpool were going about it. The center backs were being pressed by Salah and Mane. Hamtrick would be marked by Firmino. He would initially be tracked by Wijnaldum, who was stuck marking him as Milner was stuck on Alan. And he would force him deeper. And then once he got deeper to try and get on the ball, they'd have Firmino there. Alan would kind of push deep as well, and Milner would track it. But Wijnaldum and Milner would push out into those wider areas to track the fullbacks when need be and it did lead to one of Liverpool's earlier chances where the ball was switched out to Mario Rui. We saw Wijnaldum step to him and he tried to play the ball into Hamshik whereas Henderson stepped in, won the ball. What you have near now is Firmino picking it up and he's able to slide it in between Koulibaly and in between Mario Rui. And now you have Salah who's able to hold off Mario Rui but Albio comes across which probably puts him off a bit and he fires a shot into the side netting. But that's how Liverpool were going about it. They were pressing much better. The wide, the shuttlers were sticking out to the wider players. Sometimes you even saw Mane come back and track as well. But that is how they were going about it. They created that chance. Whereas for Napoli, they still dropped off in their two banks before. They pressed from the front much better. Just a bit more urgency getting to their marker quicker. Joel Matip was one of the key players that was playing passes out and he was trying to get them his players into position. But Napoli really struggled in terms of creating chances they had that one chance from the long throw where we saw Mertens break in and instead of finding Fabian what happened there is that his cross into the box was cleared by Van Dijk but Napoli really improved in the sense that Ancelotti made the right changes the positive changes he brought on Zielinski moved him out to the left hand side he ended up bringing on Milic and those two changes initially really changed things in terms of what Napoli were trying to do Zielinski was pushing forward and he replaced Fabian, he pushing forward, and he was pegging back Wijnaldum with his forward runs. You had Milik, who was dropping off a bit deeper, linking play, offered that threat in the box in terms of at attacking crosses and forcing pressure onto Matip and onto Van Dijk. Insigne, in the opening stages of that second half, was dropping off a bit deeper to get on the ball, so that didn't really help. You could tell that he was frustrated due to the lack of service. And when we look at it, eventually Gulam came on for Mario Rui. We saw Napoli kind of get into their rhythm and create some better chances. The first one we see Zielinski who's able to cut in on Milner and cut in on Matip and then we see the isolation between Kalyan and Robertson. The cross is the diagonal played in and we see Kalyan run off Robertson and he instantly guides that ball back into the box. Milic attacks it and Van Dijk makes a vital intervention once again, but just goes to show Zielinski is offering a different threat, able to beat markers. He finds Kalyan and you have Milic attacking it in the box, something that we didn't see from Napoli in the first half. So that was one positive move. Another positive move, we see the ball switched out to Gulam. The problem here with Liverpool was that as the game wore on and Gulam was pushing forward, he offers a more direct threat. He could deliver those crosses, unlike Mario Rui. Salah now was forced to track back a bit because like I said it was hard for the wider players especially Wijnaldum to get out as with Zielinski moving forward with the fact that again he has to watch out for Hamshik who is in that position and could push forward as well and they're trying to ensure that he couldn't create classes so the balls push out to Gulam. Gulam is closed instantly by Arnold but he wraps the ball around Arnold and what we see here is Zielinski drag out Matip and we see Milik from deep run off Henderson to get Get the ball. Now we see Matip have to check to him. Zelensky free in the box. He pushes it back to Zelensky, but Henderson gets there just in time, and Zelensky skies his effort over the net. But again, that's another great chance. Shows the movement of Milik, shows Gulam's threat, shows Zelensky's vertical movement as well. And that's how they were going about their business. And that was another key opportunity that we saw from them. We look to one more where we have Hamshik guiding a loose ball over Hen over Wijnaldum and it bounces over Henderson for Milic and he's able to slide the ball behind the stepping Matip. You have Arnold a bit higher for Insigne. Insigne is able to break free and what we see here is that Milik continues his run and he drags out the center backs. We have Robertson attacking the ball with Calion. The cross is played in. Robertson doesn't want to attack it. Calion free at the back post but he skies his effort over the net. This is Liverpool's side that wants to keep a clean sheet and they're conceding quality chances. That's a big problem. L let's not be silly. We see Liverpool create their chances on the transition. We see Mane and Salah squander a bunch 
bunch of chances that they probably should have converted. Yes, Liverpool could have been out of sight, but they didn't get the job done there. Napoli were still creating chances, creating better chances following the substitutions. We eventually saw uh, Klopp bring on Keita to push Salah more central and take off Firmino. That was to offer another midfielder and to have someone push out to Gulam. Then he brought on Fabinho for Milner, who couldn't come up, who couldn't continue anymore. He brought on Lovren for Arnold, who also couldn't continue. But again, they conceded one more chance. And this is them even closing down well. And Scalion from deep and Mane closes him. Cross into the box. Fabinho guides it into the path of Milic, who's free on goal, and Allison makes a key save in the final moments. He scores, Nap Napoli knocked Liverpool out. However, Allison made the big save, and that is how the second half kind of went. Liverpool obviously starting well, but again, they wasted a lot of chance that they, that they created in transition, but again, Napoli were still able to create some clear-cut chances, and that's a big problem. that was a big problem for them, but Liverpool go through out of the group, and Napoli are now bounced into the Euro Liverpool League. But let me know what you guys think. Can Liverpool make another big title, another big Champions League run? What about Napoli? Should they go for the Europa League? Does it matter? Are their Syria hopes done? Meet me in the comments below. Don't forget to upload videos every day and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And that was your daily dose of the interviews.